Do any of you ever pay attention to this doomsday clock? It's got a sort of a doomful warning for Americans. Uh, nearly seven out of 10 of us, a little bit more than that, say there is no one they trust to save us from an end of the world event. Uh, but as my Florida record was reminding me, that means a little more than a quarter think, well, it's possible, but it just doesn't look too good. All right, uh, Ray Dalio was weighing on this and all these events that sort of grip us and have us fearing. Uh, he always likes to say it's, it's not about a single event. It's not about the president of the United States breaking about a jobs report. It's not about Congress and arguing over uh, their new leader. It, it, it's all of that wrapped in one with a sweeping view of history. The world's richest man who rarely goes on record talking about this stuff, certainly on TV, just did so with me. Take a look. Don't ever pay any attention to any one thing. The most important thing that any investor can do is to know how to diversify well, to achieve a balance. If you can achieve a balance in your portfolio, and, and I would recommend most investors not tactically listen to what some guy comes on, he says, I'm bullish, I'm bearish, you listen to that, that's yeah. not going to be a winning strategy. So to know what about people who look at the market and invest today and say, I'm going to be I'm a long term investor. I believe in American capitalism. I'm going to invest in these markets. Long -term. I'm going to stick with the apples of Microsoft technology. What, uh, what do you say to them? Uh, let me get my diversification sure. point across first, and then I'll come back to that question. If you know how to diversify well, you could reduce your risk up to 80 percent without reducing your returns. So to know how to diversify, the one thing we know most is that what we don't know is greater than anything what we do know. But what, okay? where would you diversify? Well, you diversify into different asset classes. There are things that where are you underweighted. Um, and, and then you diversify into different countries. Oh, okay, if I was to pick we can get into how that, how we, we could go to. But for all of China's countries. problems, you've diversified into them. You like, and having diversified, you've expanded. You mean it, what, in China? Yeah. Okay. We're doing very well in our investments in China. Absolutely. And when, we, when it's politically not appropriate and we're told that, then we won't invest in China. But investing in China um, and investing in the United States and investing in other countries like um, India, there are parts of this world. Yeah, you call uh, India me, and a lot of what it's doing a recent you, sign of ascendance. Let me let me give so you is three, India a new bet. Let me give you three things to look for as the countries, generally, and and companies and people. Are you earning more than you were spending, so that you have a good income statement and a good balance sheet? Okay, those that are better financially will be better off, less vulnerability. Are the people within that country operating well with each other to be productive through a healthy capital markets, creative kind of environment that, they're, that the system, they're working well with each other and they're not going to fight and hurt each other. And number three is they're not going to get into an international war or some war. So if I'm looking at some places to be biased toward, I'm mm -hmm. looking at places that are more like that. But not that, like this, not that, like the that, USA. Uh, We're not doing any of that, any, um, any of it. We have, as a country, those issues. Uh, other countries have those issues, but some yeah, but places... We just, we just personified it with the fight over Kevin McCarthy and his speaker. People are looking at this, we can't get our act together, we're ignoring the elephant, the debt elephant in the room, and it's exploding on us now. Of course, but we're jumping from one thing to another. I just wanted to complete on the thought of... But we're limited the, for the time in that respect, and you're brilliant on this. I just want people hearing what you're saying are going to interpret that. Everything he warns about or, or, or cites or focuses on is a big worry right here. That's right. I, I have a principle. If you worry, you don't have to worry. And if you don't worry, you need to worry. Because if you worry, then you'll take care of the things that you're worrying about. If you don't worry, you won't. And so... But we're not worrying. So... I hope that people will worry more, be more concerned about the debt, but, be but more aren't. concerned it about even come the up international as an issue among the Americans' ten biggest concerns. Uh, uh, and certainly uh, uh, not Congress's. Okay, so maybe conversations like this 
do the best we can. Yes, yeah. we have to worry that they're not worrying. Right. And we have to worry they're not dealing with it. You're asking, what do we do? Okay, we might communicate. And we do know that every one of these things, if we work together in a smart, bipartisan way, so that we can do the best balancing of those choices, that we can deal with most of these problems. But the problem is, I'm agreeing with you, the reality is there is populism of both extremes, meaning that both parties are lining up for a fight, that there's not trust in the system, not trust in truth, not trust in the system. Well, does any politician and give as you, a result does any politician of that, give, and as a result of that, and as, you, as a result of that, and as a result of that, not and as a, uh, it's not happening, no. and as a result of that, uh, we are likely to have irreconcilable differences that may not be settled by rules and law. Okay. All right, so the direction we're on, you've talked about this in general, you know, principles for dealing with, it, you know, changing world order, principles for success, principles, I mean, this has become such a phenomenon with all your bestsellers that's even interpreted tens of millions who hop on YouTube just to catch what you're saying. But what you're saying is we're none of that, really. We're not following any principles at this point. So I'm just yes. wondering what the fallout from that could be. And is anyone on earth presently doing that? If we're in the final throes of something that could be very bad, we can avoid it. You say if we address this, but we're not. Is there a politician, a candidate, someone who stands out to you that gives you hope? I'll answer that. Just give me a second to get it out. We need bipartisan middle. The majority of Americans want a bipartisan middle. We're having extremes at both sides. But the extremes so, are the ones who are deciding it. That's right. I would say if the middle, moderate Republicans, moderate Democrats, just even said, I'm bipartisan. Can you say, I'm bipartisan. I want to work across. You'd be drummed out. You'd be okay. drummed out. Okay. But then, will you have the courage to do that? If a limited number, even a small number of both parties, became bipartisan and put together a bipartisan coalition there for voting, yeah. okay, in the Senate and the House, that they would have swing votes and they a would have party? great would party. A third party do? Well, it's not third, happening in the major. A third party is maybe something that's too great to aspire to, maybe, okay? okay? But if you even just had members of either party say, I'm bipartisan, I want to work across party lines, I have more in common with the moderates of that party to work together than I have for those other extremes. But Ronald Reagan but, did it with Tip O'Neill. Yes, to, Ron, to, to Ronald, give, give decades of the shelf life to Social Security. Right. It is possible. And that Are worked. there people like that today? We'll find out. I don't think it's likely. Right. But I think if you, if, if, it's a very simple thing. Are you bipartisan or are you not bipartisan? Is Joe Biden, by, is Joe Biden bipartisan? I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to come on whether, Trump uh, uh, not the way I mean it, okay. okay? Not the way I mean it. So, but I'm saying, and then if you have those, and then you build a coalition of those, that could make a big difference, I would hope, okay? I'm just trying to get a practical thing. But if we don't, thing. if we don't, Ray. If we don't, we are likely to have irreconcilable differences about values and wealth and important things that will drive people to different states. They'll go to the blue states or the red states. Right. There will be a difficulty of the central government to order those, the populations to behave in the way they want. They, they will say, make me. There'll be a challenge between the states That's a revolution. and the federal. That's a okay. revolution. It's a very risky situation, yeah. okay? But it's come down to that the things that people will fight for have, be, have become, I will not compromise. I'm going to win at all costs. And so the rules are in jeopardy. That's where we are now. That's where we are now. It, and it comes in committees. You know, you watch how these committees, they're very politically biased. And look at the whole Kevin in. McCarthy drama. So, I mean, so this is that, not getting better. I, I guess I'm coming back to, I guess I'm coming back to, is this your way of saying in very academic terms, historical terms, this doesn't look good for the United States? It's 
my way of trying to convey facts. Yeah. Convey, well, the facts don't favor uh, for, a good long-term ending. Convey a machine, how the machine works and convey choices that can be made at this time. I do agree with you. It's not, it's not considered a priority because we haven't felt the pain of it. We go about our lives. Yeah. You know, you go to uh, your favorite sport, you watch the movies you want to watch, kids go to school, and life is at normal, and that's and what our experience... And then, boom, something hits. And then when these things hit, so the thing... How close are we getting to the hit? It's going to evolve over the next five years, okay? Five years? It's going to evolve over the next five years in the following way. We're going to have internally a, a great political conflict in terms of that polarity and so on. As if we haven't already. No, but now we've got the elections. Right. Okay. Now we have just lining up for the fight. Okay. So. But the fight will be more entrenched even after the election. It, no matter who will, wins. W will we accept judgments and rulings? Well, what there, will there, that there certain mean? people didn't accept the last presidential election results. What makes you think that that would change? I think all I'm saying is it's a question, right? right? You asked me how it's going to evolve. See, I think you've already figured out the answers. You're that smart. You know what's going to happen, and you're, you're worried. But you're, 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 you're couching it by saying, here are some things that could change. But I don't think I don't think anybody's accusing me of couching much. <laughs> like I'm, I'm saying, here it is. Over the next year, and so on, we are going to have a great political conflict. Over the next year, two, and three, we are going to have, in my opinion, I yeah. may be wrong, we are going to have debt and economic issues that will play into that. And over the next one, two, and three years, we're going to have conflicts with geopolitical conflicts with China and such. You see how he laid that out there over the next five years. He's not a day in, short term investor, get in, get out, go what's hot or not. He's arguably become the most successful investor on earth, worth close to $20 billion practicing that. He lays it out for us after this.